Ancient biblical prophets wrote about the future. Today, theologians are poring over those scriptures with a firm belief that their prophecies are coming to pass. Journey now into the world of eschatology on Prophecy in the News with author and lecturer J.R. Church. On today's Prophecy in the News, we're going to talk about the popular subject of UFOs, those flying saucers. On the front cover of our magazine, we have some of the latest UFO sightings. But if you'll notice, they are no longer these little fuzzy lights in the sky. They can be photographed with a great deal of clarity. The question is... Is this ring ship real or is it a hoax? Gary Stearman is here with the story. Gary? Interesting story. And we should begin by saying that uh, it is my belief and the belief of many others that we are in the midst of a great UFO flap right now. Uh, a flap being the term that's used by people who follow this phenomenon to describe a burst of activity. Now, J.R., there have been several bursts of activity uh, in the 20th century and now in the 21st century, which we're going to look at today. And they have a biblical connection, which is why we're talking about UFOs as strange as this may sound. Now, these ring ships, as we're calling them, and as you look at pictures of them, you'll be able to see that they do have a lot of ring structures. Um, these ring ships have been seen by ordinary people. A, a housewife uh, with her two boys out camping. Uh, a wedding photographer who uh, I understand is a hiker and loves to go out and hike. Happened to have her camera with her. A seven-man bicycle team uh, in Big Basin, California, a national park. And uh, they saw one of these things, stopped and took pictures. Uh, these people are highly credible. Their observations have been backed up by people who have broken their silence saying, well, we know what these are. So it's a fascinating story. As one man um, wrote into the uh, internet site that had these pictures and said that he had seen them years ago sitting in a hangar at an air show at an air base yes. somewhere down south and um, that he was escorted out by those who said uh, these are not a part of the air show and uh, we need to close this hangar. And so he said that's kind of what I saw. Well, Gary, we've got several pictures here and they all appear to be somewhat different. Yes. We've got one here with what looks like a bird cage beneath it. We've got one here that has nothing beneath it. And uh, uh, then we have some other odd looking. So they're not all the same craft. Um, and yet most of them have been photographed out in California. They've been photographed in California, although some near, uh, uh, I believe it's Maxwell Air Force Base in Alabama. Yes, and in Arizona as well. In Arizona as well. But these in the, the uh, Big Basin, are, uh, California, are near to Silicon Valley. Absolutely. Which uh, just sort of uh, is, is an interesting sidelight to that because one of the men who worked on this project also... Uh, um, has come forward. He's using a pseudonym, though. Is he calls himself Isaac, so that nobody will recognize who he is. But he he says that he worked on this kind of craft in Silicon Valley. Um, in particular, he worked on anti gravity and in cloaking devices. So his statement was the reason these are being seen is that somebody threw a wrong uh, switch, flipped a wrong switch, and these invisible things suddenly became visible. And when they realized it, they flipped the switch back or something and went mm -hmm. blinked out again. Indeed. So these are only available for a few seconds. And these photographers just happened to be there shooting other things, were able to get just a few pictures. Now, the man whose pseudonym is Isaac claims to have worked on a government project. His testimony is very, very believable. It has since been corroborated by a couple of other uh, ex-government employees who also have come out, uh, one of them with pseudonym on him. The other man has admitted his name and said that what Isaac is writing about indeed goes on. The project is called CARET, C-A-R-E-T, uh, and this would be Civilian Applications Research for Extraterrestrial Technology. 
Mm -hmm. This means that... With an emphasis on the extraterrestrial yes, technology. It, the clear implication is that our government is uh, working with quote-unquote extraterrestrials in some kind of a business deal whereby we get technology out of uh, the bargain. Now, Jr. this all sounds a little bit unbelievable, but for those of you who credibility might be strained or credulity might be strained at this point hang in there because we're going to talk about the Bible and UFOs now in our August edition of Prophecy in the News we have a number of photographs as you can see this one above the trees this one shot from underneath it's got some lettering here that I think we should address on today's mm -hmm. program and uh, then we've got a model here that Isaac said uh, that he had worked with so you can see the similarities between the model and the actual flying craft and then over on page 8 we've got one that was sighted above some telephone wires and then we have a series of six, photo, uh, six photographs here showing it moving around uh, in a circle mm -hmm. um, that, by the way, the, the, the latter uh, for the photos that you mentioned, the group of photos was taken by the bicycle team in Big Basin. Yes. So a number of different people have seen these various craft. Let's talk about why um, they would be showing up at this time, Gary. Why now? Why now? J.R., as we have noted in the past, in Prophecy in the News, by the way, our motto is keep looking up, <laughs> and that seems especially appropriate uh, for this program. As we have written in the past, UFO activity is not some inexplicable thing, but rather has a biblical explanation. And we have observed that since the foundation of modern Israel, the key events in the life of modern Israel are keyed to these appearances of UFOs called UFO flaps. The first major flap having occurred in 1897, the year of the first Zionist Congress. You know, J.R., that Congress between uh, Theodore Herzl and William Heschler, a Jew and a Gentile, mm -hmm. brought together the Jews of the world in Basel, Switzerland, and they said, uh, essentially prophesied, that out of this meeting will come a reborn state of Israel. <laughs> now, he has, uh, Gary has included uh, the stories of these UFO flaps in our magazine article for August 2007. If you'd like to get this, by the way, you can call the phone number at the bottom of your screen and order this magazine. It has a fascinating story here. Uh, several pages, lots of photographs of these UFOs. And uh, these are not just the little fuzzy lights in the sky. That's what I want you to right. see. Let's talk about this Flap number one, back in 1897. What mm -hmm. kind of UFOs showed up at that time? In 1897, and by the way, the, the literature is full of this. All you have to do is go to the Internet or uh, pick up any of a dozen books, and you can read all about it for yourself. In 1897, on a worldwide basis, strange airships, as they were called, resembling almost helium balloons, but not quite. The, some of them had very strange apparatus connected with them, and these airships began to be seen day and night. In fact, they would shine bright lights down on cities at night, San Francisco, Cincinnati, Ohio, Kansas City, Missouri. All of the newspapers at the time reported the airships. And the thought was uh, that a new technology was dawning which would soon take man into the heavens. 1897, mm. the year of the Zionist Congress, and the uh, there were some interesting things that happened. For example,